Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Arabic television talk show. I'm Saad Asfour, your host. Today, my guest is Farouk Day. He started a leadership academy program for teens who are first generation immigrants. He is an associate vice president for student affairs and dean of career education at Stanford. He held leadership roles at Stanford and other American colleges. He is a keynote speaker in many conventions around the world. Welcome to the show, Farouk. It's a pleasure. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, Farouk, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, certainly. I'm uh, um, uh, an immigrant myself to the United States. I've been in the United States for close to 20 years. Uh, uh, arrived here in uh, my late teens and started college and uh, went to college in several universities and just sort of had great opportunities to uh, um, study and uh, gain great leadership experiences um, and have uh, wonderful mentors. And I'm uh, I started this program to really give back to the community and to others and to allow others to benefit from the, the same experiences that I had growing up. Wow, that's wonderful. So your first stop was in California and you've been here ever since? Actually, California is my most recent stop. Uh, since I l uh, moved to the United States, I have lived in five different states, from Wisconsin to Washington State, Florida, uh, Pennsylvania, and California is my most recent one. So I've explored quite a bit around this country. Wow, beautiful. Uh, so what is the Leadership in Academy, your academy program? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? The Leadership Academy um, uh, program that I started um, uh, in the uh, the San Jose area or in the Bay Area um, is targeted towards teens who are specifically first-generation Americans, uh, uh, children of uh, uh, immigrants. Um, so those are the children who were born in this country? Typically born or might have uh, come here with their parents at a very young age. Okay. These are kids who certainly identify as Americans, uh, American citizens. Um, they also have the heritage and the background of their uh, um, cultures uh, or the cultures of their parents and um, I started this program specifically in conjunction with um, the Algerian American Association of Northern California um, because I wanted to plant the early seeds of mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the early passion for leadership mm -hmm. um, and uh, also really just give them the confidence that they could aspire to become leaders in their professional uh, and personal communities. Uh, so we launched this program together this last year. It's uh, targeted towards teens who are 13 years old uh, uh, and or older. And uh, it's been just a fascinating experience working with them uh, and giving them uh, uh, some of the basic skills of leadership and confidence in themselves. So it's one program that you use for all the teenagers. It's the same program. You, you start them from age 13 and to yeah. 19? Yeah, so it's it's one cohort so far, um, uh, one cohort of uh, uh, students who uh, are at different uh, age groups. Uh, so they go from 18 years old and it goes all, all the way up to uh, 20 years old, let's say. Uh, the majority tend to be around the ages of 15 or 16, uh, but it's just one group. And uh, as they keep returning from year to year, they're obviously older. Um, and um, those who are uh, 18 years old or, or, or more, um, I use them in the capacity of advisors, of mm -hmm. uh, peer advisors and facilitators or co-facilitators uh, with me. And I have two of those uh, right now with me and that, that, that's been a good experience as okay. well. Okay, so how does the program work for the students? Sure. Um, so we, uh, um, uh, I, I have developed a curriculum that um, engages these students on a monthly basis. So we meet once a month for two hours, um, and during those two hours uh, each month, we go through a variety of exercises that um, help them learn uh, some of the very basic skills of leadership. So I usually do a very small uh, section of those two hours. Uh, on uh, teaching some of those principles and then the rest is just practice through group activities and exercises and um, uh, some of the uh, obstacle exercises that uh, that they use. So I try to make it very interactive and fun 
so that they can keep coming back and they uh, don't lose interest. Um, we we don't do uh, major homework. It's mostly just really working within their own teams and learning some of the basic skills of uh, communication and teamwork and um, um, uh, analyzing uh, the situation and problem solving. Um, and the activities that we participate in are just a lot of fun, uh, uh, just very exciting uh, to see that. The outcome has been just really uh, encouraging. Uh, I remember from the first session when we launched it, uh, many of those students came clearly because their parents brought them. Uh, but now they're the ones who remind their parents that it's time to go to the Leadership Academy. Wow. Uh, we are in our second year of the program. When we started, we started with eight uh, students uh, in the program. We are now in our second year with uh, 19 students in the program, so we've more than doubled. Uh, and that's because there is interest that's growing uh, among the community to, to have students uh, oh, join wow. us. That's awesome. So what are the requirement checklist the student must have? So the main requirements requirement right now is that they have to be 13 years uh, or older uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in age and that they want to be part of the program. Because I am doing the program in collaboration with the uh, Algerian American Association of Northern California, uh, we are um, uh, promoting the program uh, through that channel. So it's mainly uh, students who, are, uh, who come from families that are members of that association. They um, must be a member. They don't have to be a member at this point, but that's, that's, it's been promoted as a pilot program through that. Uh, but if somebody else wants to join from uh, uh, a family that's and not a member, we, yeah, we can uh, certainly uh, welcome them. So the, the program is designed for Middle East students, mostly? It's been targeted towards that. You know, that's where it started. But I, I think um, it has potential to grow, uh, to uh, reach many communities, I would say, in the Bay Area. And that's a hope that I have, is that I'm that we can, we can grow it and promote it to many communities and maybe create different sessions for different communities. Um, I think it's important for uh, an, students to explore these issues of leadership within the communities that where they feel most comfortable and where they feel like they are most connected. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is, I think, a benefit to that. Uh, Farouk, what problem did you face designing this program and starting it? And get it going. It looks like it's successful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that the um, um, uh, the the entry point was really uh, not that difficult. I'm surprised myself that um, I think um, as soon as we created it and I uh, and we promoted it, students showed up and their parents brought them. So. What that tells me is that, that there is a thirst and there, there is a interest in, in the, this type of programming. So that hasn't been an, an issue. I'm not sure if we really uh, uh, faced any major problems at this point that I can talk about. It's been fairly simple. I've, I think that I've simplified how students can uh, access it and it's, uh, it's, it's been good. So I, I can't think of anything not at this problems, point. Huh? No. No, I mean, well, I think good. I think even the students. I mean, the the small thing is that how do you keep students engaged, mm -hmm. and they don't lose interest and they they stay focused on the task. But those are those are things that are part of the part of, part of the process when you're working with teenagers. Those are the things that you you face. Um, that hasn't been a, the, too much of an issue for us. Well, it sounds like you're a very good leader. Um, well, I do my best. I, I, I learn a lot and I have some good mentors and I read a lot of leadership books. So I appreciate you saying that. So what messages do you give to society? Um, well, uh, the first thing is that diversity uh, leads to innovation and um, uh, diversity leads to some of the most phenomenal leaders um, um, in, uh, in our culture, in our, in our environment. So. Uh, what I'm trying to do is really make uh, leadership uh, accessible and desired by uh, students from a variety of cultures, um, whether they have access or not, when they have privilege or not. Uh, the reason I focused on um, 
first generation Americans who are children of immigrants is because typically in those cultures or in those types of uh, environments, students are not really encouraged to pursue uh, leadership um, um, uh, opportunities. I don't think that they are discouraged. I just think that they t those are not conversations that are happening a lot in those environments in large and re research shows that. So uh, that's why I've been focused on that is that I, I I just want students to constantly think that this is possible and that they have the ability to do it and they, they can build the confidence to pursue leadership opportunities, whether they're in their just personal communities or at work uh, or at school or whatever they'd like. Well, I'm very sure if they have a good role model, they will achieve that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so is this program for limited time or is this like for the long run? What's your goal? My vision is to have it for the long run. Um, I started this program and I want to continue it for many years to come. And w my dream is to see the students who I am uh, teaching today uh, in this program return in uh, the future as mentors and as co-facilitators and as teachers, as role models themselves. If I can work with a 15-year-old today who can come back in 10 or 15 years and that person is already a leader in their community, um, that would be a great example that I can give to f uh, future generations. So what you do in life basically is you are helping, uh, you, you're helping a lot of students and a lot of teenagers to succeed in life. So how you manage that? How, how, how do you keep up with all that stuff? What do you keep uh, teaching yourself and what kind of courses you keep taking to upgrade yourself to keep to the same level you started with? Um, for me personally, what I try to do is uh, continue to read and continue to engage with what's happening in, in the world around me. Um, I'm very engaged in um, uh, regional, national, and international organizations within my field, and that just keeps me current and keeps me connected. I've learned a long time ago that um, in order to be successful, one has to be engaged in his or her own network as well, so continually, continuously developing relationships within my own professional networks, and then just finding the right mentors and role models uh, to do it and try new things and take risks. All these things I try to um, um, include in the curriculum for the Leadership Academy that I started. And what, that's what I really want to teach those students is that, that in order to achieve uh, these goals, uh, there are certain habits one, uh, one uh, should include in their personal and professional life that, that, that they can achieve uh, that. Now, we all know that uh, teenagers who are first immigrant, first generation, they go through some tough time because the parents are rooted to their culture and, uh, you know, coming to this country and they're, they're the first generation. They go through some challenges in life and the parents as well. And uh, they try to teach their ways to their kids and uh, raise them the same way they were raised in their country. So what advice you give to these kids? Because some of them are struggling between their community, their culture, and their friends, and their school, and their, the difference with uh, being home with the family, and if their mom and dad are old fashioned. So I'm sure, what advice you like to give them? Yeah, I, so I, I think there is definitely that challenge that they are, the, that um, uh, children of uh, uh, immigrant families experience yes. is that they're constantly living in a dual environment where they're negotiating expectations and, uh, from two different cultures or multiple cultures, sometimes yeah. more than two. Um, at the same time, uh, there are major benefits from growing up in that kind of environment. And I try to remind, that was the first advice that I would give to these students is that, I try to remind them of the uh, the benefits of growing up in such a, uh, an, a an environment that sometimes can be challenging and difficult. Uh, that they're growing up with amazing multicultural competencies that allow them to deal with people from a variety of cultures, sometimes knowing different languages, that they have the flexibility to um, adjust and to adapt to different situations because from, the, from an early age, they are used to negotiating different, uh, different cultures and, tr and, and learning how to sometimes even sell or convince somebody who might have a different way of thinking. These are abilities that we might take for granted sometimes, but they are amazing and they are 
are highly sought after by employers and that and these are abilities that will make them uh, great leaders in the future um, so the, the the skill of negotiation is really important in leadership and these are kids who have learned how to do that from an early age. Yes. So those are those are some pieces of advice that I would give is to to also look at the positive um, of growing up in such a, uh, uh, an environment. Um, the, the, the so you keep reminding them with the output. Yeah. And what they gain at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remind them of those, and I remind them also of um, uh, continuing to balance uh, the. Um, the American identity that they have adopted, but then also con continuously cherishing uh, the the traditions and the uh, the culture that they are grew up in. And when you're dealing with with teenagers, sometimes it's hard to uh, for, for them to really uh, and to really respect that. But I think that they will appreciate it the older they get. Right. Uh, so where does a student meet and for session and how long each course yeah. or session and how long it lasts? So I ha have been blessed to receive a space uh, uh, from the uh, uh, um, uh, Arab American Association in San Jose that has allowed us to uh, to provide uh, these to sessions. Use their facilities. Uh, use their facilities, and uh, you know, and, and it allowed us to to make the program uh, accessible and free for uh, for the students. So although we meet there, and as I said, on a monthly basis for two uh, hours uh, each time. I have plans in the future to start taking them on field trips, um, um, and so, so not always in that space, but when we're not in this space, we would be uh, making some field trips to either companies or organizations or schools uh, or different areas where they can participate in leadership activities. So you watch these students, and do you follow up with them, and do you watch their accomplishment? Yeah, I, you know, I've gotten to know them through that program. The, the program is not demanding on purpose uh, because I, I want to maintain their engagement over a long period of time. That's why we only meet once a month for two hours. Um, but I see them on a regular basis in other activities and events, and those are, are not prescribed meetings. Um, and I get to keep up with what they are doing at schools, and I'm uh, getting very close with them that way. Um, the program is still young. I think um, we will be able to see their accomplishments over time in five years and ten years' time. Well, let's talk about money for a minute here. Um, we know United States send aids over six billion dollars every year, international aids. How much these uh, kids are allowed for? Do they have allowance for financial aid? Or uh, is there any student loans they have to get before they join your program? Yeah, so I, I think that's a good question. I think w once we start growing it even more, I think those are uh, avenues we want to explore. At this point, because it's still at a pilot stage and I got uh, uh, the, the sponsorship by the uh, Algerian American Association and the Arab American Association here in the Bay Area, um, I was able to just make the program for free. So wow. the students don't have to pay anything to awesome. join and to participate. What I really wanted to do is lower the barriers of access as much as I can because I want to make sure that they have no reason not to participate. Um, I think as the program grows and the demand grows, uh, we might need to look at other ways to, um, uh, to fund it so that it's, it continues to be accessible. Uh, let's talk about career development for a minute uh -huh. here. And we, we know this is your specialty and this is something you love doing. Can you give advice to the students uh, to choose their career? Sure. I, um, um, it, it would be the same advice that I would give to my students where I work or uh, to, to anyone who reaches out to me. And, and it's the advice that I have benefited from, which is to first uh, uh, assess oneself. I, I would tell these students, uh, know who you are first, figure out what your interests are, what are your passions, your skills, your values, um, and try to pursue something that really excites you and uh, you will find ways to make a career out of that um, as long as you continue to be engaged in communities and in networks because the training um, can prepare you for some of those jobs, but it's really the relationships that will help you advance your career further. So um, um, you wanna know what you like to do, 
um, and uh, you can find ways to, uh, to uh, uh, advance those goals, but it's the relationships that will really elevate you to uh, some of the higher levels of your career. That's great. Uh, talk to us about uh, Vision 2020 and what advice you give. So I, I joined Stanford uh, about a year and a half ago um, and um, uh, started looking at how to reinvent our career and, and professional development process for our own students and uh, developed this uh, new campaign to help us redesign our program um, so that by 2020, we uh, will be the cutting edge career development program uh, around the world. And we started this process a year and a half ago. We completely reinvented our process, our staff, our training. We have increased uh, uh, our staff within the last uh, six months and we're on our way to really uh, reaching that goal. The idea is how do we um, connect our students to some of the best opportunities in the world that are available to them, uh, whether it, it's at a university like Stanford or at any other college or university around the world. How can this model um, uh, bring the six degrees of separation between a college student and an employer to two degrees of separation? Wow, that's awesome. You also, you are a keynote speaker for many different organizations all over the places, mm -hmm. all over the world, in many different states. What subject do you cover when you talk? Well, it depends on the research that I am conducting at the time. Um, for the last year and this upcoming year, I've uh, developed a certain level of expertise on how to design career and professional development programs in uh, colleges and universities. And that has been of great interest to a lot of associations um, and organizations around the world. And they reach out to me and ask me to, to share a little bit about that and about the work that I am doing, and I'm happy to share it. Uh, I was watching you on YouTube and you were talking about how students, they should follow up on their career and their education online. Mm -hmm. So what problem are facing now that we have all this technology and all the changes and mobile technology? How can they follow up on their career mm -hmm. and their education? Well, we are in an age now where uh, much of our uh, digital, much of our brand is in the digital space. So right. what I'm working with uh, individuals on, not just college students, is how do you create your brand uh, in the digital space as well, uh, whether that's in social media, uh, on sites like LinkedIn, for example, and developing a, a powerful profile, or your engagement in um, um, the social, in other social media like Twitter um, and others, and how do you become a thought leader in your own professional uh, networks? Um, so I encourage everyone to, uh, to really engage in that and in developing your online presence because that's how people will find you, just as you have found uh, some video on YouTube or you have found some other information about me. That's what I would encourage my students to do is to really engage in that, um, um, in that work and in uh, the, the web space. Uh, so you have uh, over 14 years of experience in uh, progressive leadership and Dean career development. What are some of the challenges that you face? in this experience? Mm -hmm. um, well, the world is con constantly changing and the economy is constantly changing and technology is constantly changing. So you are um, never, uh, it, it, it never stands still. And that's, and that's a, a, a great opportunity for us, but certainly the challenge is that we have to, we are constantly chasing a moving target and uh, one can never stop from looking for opportunities to innovate and reinvent. Uh, himself or herself. That's beautiful. So what are the characteristics that you have to have to continue with the executive? Um, well, the first thing is, uh, in, in order to be a strong leader in any profession, really, is well, one has to have the ability to d develop uh, an inspiring vision for his or her followers. It, this is something that I teach in my Leadership Academy to, to my students, is how do you develop vision? So. Um, in, in my opinion, it comes from uh, um, listening um, to one's customers, followers, to one's community very carefully because I think a vision, a strong vision is born from that. So I think that that's a characteristic that I try to um, 
uh, embed in my curriculum that I want my students to really uh, learn at an early age. Um, and, uh, and I think it has helped me so far, and hopefully it, it will help them in the future. Wow, you seem to be very busy. So what would you like to see more of in 2015? Um, well, I would like, and in relation to the Leadership Academy program, I would like to see uh, the students who are in it uh, continue, continue to get a lot more out of it and continue to engage. And I would like to see more students uh, uh, join us um, and uh, uh, be part of the program. What would you like to see less in 2015? Oh, less uh, of what? In general, I would say probably less um, um, less conflict in general. Um, I think uh, um, that would probably be beneficial for the entire world and all of our communities. Well, uh, Farouk, thank you very much. I really uh, enjoyed uh, this interview, and uh, I think it's very informative to a lot of people. Uh, you've been, uh, you set good example and inspiration for too many uh, teenagers and uh, students who are looking out there for some help where you can help them and they're looking out for you. And uh, also I'm looking forward to see more leadership coming out of your program. I am too. I am too. Yeah, and so I, I look forward to seeing them. We will always be very proud of your uh, creative work. I appreciate the time. I really enjoyed this interview as well. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again in future interviews. Thank you so much. Thank you. It. Take care. And uh, with this, I would like to say good night to everybody.